Here are 10 things you can do to manage spray drift. The most effective way to reduce spray drift is don't spray. Reducing certain crops without pesticides is possible. To do this, you have to rely solely on mechanical and cultural methods to control crop pests. Buyers sometimes offer attractive premiums for products produced without the use of pesticides. When you do have to spray, read and follow the directions on the pesticide label. If I were to look back over the years, I would say the primary problem is that the farmer does not read the label uh, before applying the product. There is a tendency year to year, if you're using the same product especially, to say, well, I used it last year and uh, probably things have not changed and, and uh, you know, I know there may be some dangers, but I'm in a, I'm in a hurry. I, I guess I really don't have time to to review that, uh, that label, it's a long, it's usually fine print. The label so will forth. give instructions about the safe and effective use of pesticides with minimal risk to the environment. Water volumes, appropriate weather conditions, and stage of growth of the pest and crop may be on the label. Establish no spray zones or buffer strips. Locate these strips around your farm perimeter to separate the sprayed area from neighboring land. This may help keep your pesticides from trespassing. You have to decide the width of the buffer strips and number of sides requiring protection. Check the label for buffer zone size requirements. A good general rule of thumb is that buffer strips should be no less than the width of one spray swath. Use high water rates. Higher water rates require the use of larger nozzles. Larger nozzles produce larger spray droplets. Using higher spray volumes means you will have to refill your tank a lot more often. However, you may achieve better coverage and improve the pesticide effectiveness. Choose the right nozzles. Nozzle type selection is one of the most critical components of the sprayer to alter droplet size. Nozzles with the same output can create different size droplets. Droplet sizes are influenced by the internal design of the nozzle. Under artificial wind tunnel conditions, you can see the difference between standard flat fan and drift reducing flat fan nozzles of the same size. You must determine what size droplets are required. Understanding weather influences on spray droplets will allow you to carefully time your spray applications. Carefully weigh all the factors which have the potential to cause drift. Remember them? Wind, travel speed, evaporation, drag, and rising hot air. After carefully considering all these factors, you can then decide if it is indeed a good time to spray. Sometimes the spray window is not wide during daylight hours. Spraying during non-traditional times may provide more favorable conditions for spraying. Normally, environmental conditions for spraying improve in the early morning, late evening, and at night. Now that we know the forces that cause spray droplets to drift, it is easy to understand why. Air temperatures are lower, wind speeds decrease, and relative humidity increases. All these combine to increase the potential for spray droplets to reach the target. Dollars and cents is what it came down to. Um, if we're putting this chemical on during the day and it's windy and it's blowing away, we're not getting use of it. Um, and traditional ways of spraying in the morning hours, um, when we think about what we're doing, especially with post-emergence chemistry, uh, we've, we've got to understand what we're trying to do. And that's why this afternoon and evening sprayer is much more accommodating to the plant and to the weed. One problem with nighttime spraying is that it's dark. It can be difficult to see where the next swath is. In row crops, this is fairly easily done by counting rows. In solid seeded crops, tram lines or blanked rows can easily mark swaths across the field. With the addition of two lights mounted on the back of the sprayer, 
the spray nozzles can be easily seen. Add fluorescent dyes to marking foam to increase visibility at night. Use anti-drift technology. A number of means are available to protect spray plumes from air currents, hoods, perforated screens, and air assist technology. Individual nozzle hoods are available which protect the top portion of the spray plume. Other hoods are available which cover the whole boom. A near-perfect seal has to be maintained at the front and back of the shields to prevent air movement underneath. You can travel faster and you can spray under slightly windier conditions. The flexible drapes have to be carefully washed after application to prevent wicking onto sensitive crops. Some boom hoods make it impossible to see your nozzles. A monitoring system is required so you can tell when individual nozzles or groups of nozzles are plugged. Perforated screens are also available. They reduce the airspeed passing over the spray plumes. Again, flexible drapes extend below the screen to slow air movement under the screens. Small droplets which are carried off hit and stick to the screen combine with others and fall to the target. Cleaning is necessary to prevent crop damage to future crops sprayed. Unfortunately, the screens can only be used on trailing boom sprayers. Air assist or air curtain sprayers use a sheet of air to protect the spray plumes and help carry small droplets down to the target. Many designs are available. In all cases, the airspeed is variable and the direction of the air discharge is adjustable. Some spray additives can act as spray thickeners when added to the spray solution, producing larger droplets. Only consider a drift control additive if it is specifically recommended on the product label. These products give water-based sprays a syrupy quality, thereby producing larger droplets and reducing drift. Well, be very careful. These drift-reducing additives may drastically distort the spray distribution from the nozzle tips. Use alternative technology. Wiper or wick weeders by their design eliminate drift. Herbicide is applied to weeds by wiping with an absorptive material soaked with pesticide. Since no droplets are formed, no drift is possible. One criteria for this system to work is that there must be a definite difference in height between the weeds and the crop. The weeds must be higher than the crop so that they are the only plants which are wiped with the pesticide. Two passes in opposite directions may be required to apply adequate material on the plants. Lower the boom. Operating your boom as close to the target as possible while staying within manufacturer's recommendations is a good way to reduce drift. Minimize the nozzle to target distance to reduce the exposure of spray droplets to the effects of air currents. Wider spray angle nozzles will allow you to drop your spray boom while maintaining uniform spray coverage. Your farm topography and boom width will dictate how close to the ground is practical to run the boom and not suffer damage. So you see there are things you can do to reduce spray drift. Don't spray if you can avoid it. Read the label. Use buffer strips. Use high water rates. Choose the right nozzles. Watch the weather. Use anti-drift technology. Use adjuvants cautiously. Use alternative technology. Lower the boom. There is no doubt that controlling spray drift is a challenge. However, by taking the time to manage drift, you will do a much better job of spraying. You will protect yourself and your family. You will get better pest control. You will save money and be a good environmental steward.